I'm Ronnie from Ronnie's Garage in Southern California. Uh, welcome to our first hands-on, without touching, uh, Zoom technical meet. And what we're going to do today, instead of being super vehicle specific, we're going to be talking about basic electrical concepts and testing. Uh, so we just fixed this relay. Try fixing that one. It is plastic. It is sealed together. You can pry these apart. You can booger, booger them up. But I'm going to challenge every one of you, if you really want to get rid of the Prince of Darkness, then you can go to Bosch. Okay. Now, this, both of these relays will do the same. These relays come in many kind of configurations. This is just a normal I don't believe this is a complicated one. Uh, oh yeah, this one is. This one has a diode in it. So you have to pay attention to the little circuit diagram. It's hard to read. Can you, you can't read that, can you? Let me get a light on it. Is that better? Can you see that? No. There is a, it's a diode. Now a diode symbol, like this one over here, if you look at this. You got an arrow with a line crossing it. And a diode is a one-way valve. It only allows voltage or ground to go one direction, which is really nice to have when you want to isolate circuits. And that's what they do with the, a lot of window modifications, but I won't go into that. So they make them basic like this too. There's different models. Some of them have resistors, some are smaller, bigger. Some have a little plastic tang on here that you can mount it which is what I would use for this. But you have terminals that are numbered under here. You got on the Bosch relays, you're always gonna have an 87, an 87A, a 30, and then we got an 85 and an 86. So for those of you who wanna get rid of the Prince of Darkness and put Bosch relays in there, write this down. 87, I mean 85 and 86 are the two winding ones. Okay, now you gotta pay attention on the ones with the diode, but on a Lucas, Luke, I have yet to see a Lucas relay with a diode in it, because they're so old school. So 85 and 86 go to W1 and W2. Write that down. And then 30, what happens is on this relay, let's see if this one works. Now you wonder why would I wanna do that? Okay, that relay's working. So what happens is Lucas makes this basic same relay in different configurations with the bracket. Um, the new ones come with a seal and it's all sealed up so moisture can't get in there. Uh, the Bosch relays are typically that most of the cars went to Bosch relays. So that should tell you something. Not that they don't ever have problems, but um, this relay right here probably costs you about 70, 80 bucks. This relay right here probably costs you about 10. So there's a motivation right there to, to upgrade is what they call it. And on the shadows, especially the shadow twos, they use three of these relays to make the windshield wipers work. Okay. And you have those normally closed and they're normally open and they all have a job. Every wire is connected on every one of them. So a lot of times the wipers won't turn off. Even the spirits and spurs will do that, but they have these relays. Sometimes the wipers won't turn off. Sometimes they'll get stuck. They do all kinds of things. First thing I always do is just swap the three, three relays. There's three of them. Put all new relays on and see what happens. And nine to nine and a half times out of 10, that will fix the problem. So if you've got a shadow, you don't want to spend $200 on three relays you can convert them to the Bosch relays. And I'm gonna show you the circuitry for that. So let's just make sure that this relay works. We know that it activates. The, the C2 on this one is the feed for both of these. Remember one is closed when it's not activated and the opposite when it's activated and vice versa over there. So C2 corresponds to 30 Bosch relay, okay? So that's the same as C2 on this relay. 
So Ronnie, Bill says, it looks like positive to C2, which other terminal? I think you may have just answered that. Though. Well, I'm putting positive to it, but some circuits feed ground there. So remember that, it depends on the circuit. Because if you wanna switch grounds on a wiper circuit perhaps, then you'll put a ground here and use other wires to activate it. And then you can switch a ground from this one to that one. So don't be, don't just think it's positive. Just remember that C2 corresponds with 30. So here's the one that I recommend for this wiper relay conversion. You see it has a basic circuit. You don't see any diodes or resistors in there. It has a mounting tank, so you can just mount it where this was. Uh, it is a Bosch. Write this down. It's a 0332-209-150. This is what I use for all the wiper conversion. Yeah, this is a real common relay. This is a Bosch, and there's other brands that will do the same thing. So let's, let's recheck this thing here. So we've got our voltage feed, goes to 30. Let's see if this has the A, yes. Now this one has the 87. So here are the numbers. I think we've got a 85, 86, 87A, and 30. So 30 is a common feed, okay? And we can check to see if this relay is good by just going to the normally closed, 87A. So that's normally closed, okay? So if we wanna make it activate when we turn the relay on, then we can do this. So we're at the 87 terminal and we hook up our winding wires and we'll just activate it. See that? That's a relay. And you might wonder, what do you need a relay for when you could just do it all in a switch? The idea behind the relay is to get a cleaner, higher current power source to your load. Your load is a motor or anything else that takes a lot of current. AC clutch, AC fan, motor again, window motor, um, so rather than running all that current, remember the, the current creates heat on smaller, bad connections, smaller wires, uh, resistance. Uh, that way you can get a cleaner power source close to the wiper motor. That's why these relays are out right by the wiper motor so that you don't have to run all the current through the wiper switch and the wiper intermittent control and all that kind of stuff that come along with it. You can. Take your relays apart. And remember, this is the important part, don't forget where the wires go. So let's back up one second. I, I was gonna tell you the, the terminal correspondence, okay? So W1 and W2 on this particular relay, it doesn't matter, they're W1 and W2. Those correspond with 85 and 86. C2, corresponds with 30. Now, now which one, I, I think this was the clo normally closed one, right? We can check that by just putting some juice to the feed and seeing which one lights up the light, yeah. So the normally closed on this Lucas relay is C3. So that would mean that 87A and C3 are the same. And then the last is uh, C1, and that corresponds with 87. And they're just push on connectors on. These are just push on. Yeah, these are they're called spade connectors. They're quarter inch wide. That's that's their size. They make different width uh, spade connectors. And are they marked as say C2 or 85 or whatever in the car? A good way to do it, if you just want to change it to these, is just do it right there. Take that one, and you know it goes to that, or this one, you know it goes to that one. So just disconnect that one, plug it on there. These two go to the outside ones. This one goes to the middle. And that one goes to that. Or you can take the time. If you want to clean this up, and you don't want to mix up your wires, do them one at a time. Don't disconnect all your relays and count on the wiring diagram to help you out. Now there are the, the, the Rolls-Royce shop manuals are a good suggestion on how to fix the cars. 
they don't have all the answers. The wiring diagrams are a little bit tricky. Uh, so I typically their wiring diagrams are a theoretical wiring diagram, which is one big sheet, which is like a map that shows you where all the circuits go and how they work. But it doesn't tell you where all the parts are in the car. So it's not a practical wiring diagram. Right, it's not a treasure map. Yes, it's just a map to hell. So.